Paradox of Nothingness and Ancient Philosophical Debates The concept of nothing is one of the most perplexing ideas in both philosophy and science. It's hard for the human mind to truly grasp what nothing means. For most people, thinking of nothing conjures images of darkness or empty space. But even these are not truly nothing, because darkness is still a visual experience and empty space is still a form of existence. From a scientific standpoint, even a vacuum, thought to be nothing, contains particles that pop in and out of existence due to quantum fluctuations. Therefore, the idea of pure nothingness may be an abstract concept that doesn't exist in reality. Philosophers have long wrestled with this idea. One of the first to tackle the problem was Parmenides, who famously argued that nothing cannot exist. In his view, if we can think or speak of something, it must exist in some form. He believed that change itself was an illusion because for something to change, it would have to come from or go into nothing, which is impossible. Plato and Socrates generally supported this view, but Aristotle offered a contrasting perspective. Aristotle recognized that while Parmenides' reasoning might hold up in abstract discussions, the observable world contradicts it. In everyday life, things clearly do change and evolve, meaning the idea of absolute nothing might not be applicable to how the universe works. The debate surrounding nothingness has persisted into modern times, especially in the realm of cosmology and quantum physics. In fact, the confusion about what nothing really is continues to fuel both philosophical and scientific inquiries, making it a critical question in understanding the origins of the universe. Einstein's view of time and quantum mechanics' role in defining nothing. Albert Einstein's groundbreaking work on space-time revolutionized the way we think about the universe, particularly the nature of time. According to his theory of relativity, time is not a fixed, independent entity, but rather something that is relative and interconnected with space. He suggested that the distinction between the past, present, and future is a stubbornly persistent illusion, meaning that all moments in time coexist in a broader framework. In essence, time is not linear, but part of a four-dimensional space-time continuum, where events in the past, present, and future are all equally real. This idea plays a crucial role in modern cosmology because it challenges our understanding of beginnings, such as the idea that the universe came from nothing. Einstein's view also affects the scientific conversation about the Big Bang and the origins of the universe. If time is an illusion and relative, then the concept of a before, the Big Bang, becomes complicated. What does it mean for the universe to have a beginning if time itself is part of the universe? Enter quantum mechanics, which further complicates the notion of nothing. In quantum theory, even empty space, which might be perceived as nothing, is not truly empty. Quantum fluctuations mean that particles and antiparticles are constantly appearing and disappearing, even in what seems like a vacuum. This activity is driven by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which states that certain properties of particles, such as their position and momentum, cannot be measured with absolute precision. This principle applies to energy as well, meaning that there is always a minimum level of uncertainty in even the most empty regions of space. As a result, what scientists once thought of as nothing is now understood to be full of energy and activity at the quantum level. In the quantum world, the concept of absolute emptiness or nothingness simply doesn't exist. Even in a vacuum, there are still these quantum fluctuations that create temporary particles. This fundamentally challenges our ability to define nothing and suggests that the universe may never have come from nothing in the strictest sense. The Big Bang Theory and Epochs of the Universe's Expansion The Big Bang Theory is one of the most widely accepted models explaining the origins of the universe. It suggests that the universe began from an extremely hot and dense state, known as a singularity, and rapidly expanded. This expansion wasn't just a spread of matter into existing space. It was the very fabric of space and time itself that stretched outward. At its inception, the universe was a chaotic environment where fundamental forces like gravity and electromagnetism were unified into one. However, as the universe expanded and cooled, these forces separated, leading to the formation of the physical laws we observe today. 
One of the most interesting aspects of the Big Bang theory is that it didn't result in immediate stability. Instead, the universe underwent several egg epochs, each characterized by different conditions and dominant forces. The first of these was the Planck era, lasting from 0 to 10 to the negative 43rd power seconds after the Big Bang. During this time, the universe was incredibly hot and dense, and the four fundamental forces, gravity, electromagnetism, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force, were unified into a single force. As the universe cooled, it entered the grand unified epoch. From 10 to the negative 43rd seconds to 10 to the negative 36 seconds, during which the strong nuclear force separated from the other forces. This phase allowed the formation of quarks and other subatomic particles, laying the groundwork for matter to exist. This process continued with the ad electro weak epoch. From 10 to the power of negative 36 seconds to 10 to the power of negative 12 seconds where the universe was still dominated by plasma and the strong force was further differentiated from electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force. The universe continued to expand, entering the null particle era. From 10 to the minus 12 seconds to 380,000 years after the Big Bang. During this time, radiation and subatomic particles like electrons and protons dominated the cosmos eventually leading to the formation of atoms. This era marked a significant transition as the universe cooled enough for atomic structures to form, which would later clump together under the influence of gravity to create stars and galaxies. Finally, the universe entered the era of structure. From about 380,000 years to several hundred million years after the Big Bang, during which gravity began to pull matter together forming the first galaxies and stars. This era laid the foundation for the universe as we see it today, expanding, cooling, and slowly forming the complex structures that we observe in the cosmos. These epochs demonstrate that the universe didn't come into existence in a singular event, but rather evolved over time through a series of intricate and interconnected phases. This step-by-step -step expansion and cooling process explains why the universe is so orderly today, despite its seemingly chaotic beginnings. Conformal Cyclic Cosmology and Evidence of Previous Universes One of the most intriguing ideas in modern cosmology is the theory of Conformal Cyclic Cosmology, CCC, proposed by physicist Roger Penrose. This theory challenges the notion that the Big Bang was the beginning of everything. Instead, CCC suggests that the universe goes through infinite cycles of expansion and contraction, with each Big Bang marking the end of one universe and the beginning of another. In other words, our universe is not a unique, one-time event, but part of an eternal, self-replicating cycle of universes. According to CCC, after a long period of expansion, the universe will eventually reach a state of high entropy, where everything has decayed, and all that remains are cold, dark space and the occasional photon. At this point, the universe undergoes a big crunch, where it collapses and transitions into the next Big Bang, beginning a new cycle. In this view, the Big Bang is not the beginning of time or space, but simply a transition from one universe to the next in an infinite chain. One of the most fascinating aspects of this theory is that it provides a way to test its validity by looking for accurate evidence of previous universes. In our current one, according to Penrose, remnants of black holes from the previous universe might survive the collapse and carry over into the new cycle. These remnants could leave behind observable, ah-cosmic microwave background. CM Bage radiation, which we might be able to detect as subtle temperature fluctuations. If scientists can find these fluctuations in the CMB, it would be strong evidence that our universe is just one iteration in an infinite sequence of universes. The search for these black hole remnants is ongoing, and while no conclusive evidence has yet been found, the possibility remains tantalizing. The idea that our universe is part of an endless cycle fundamentally changes our understanding of time and existence.
In this view, the concept of nothing isn't necessary because the universe is never truly created or destroyed. It simply transitions through different phases. This cyclical model of the universe offers an alternative to the traditional view of the universe's ultimate fate, which posits that it will either expand infinitely until it reaches a cold, empty state or collapse back in on itself in a big crunch. Instead, CCC allows for the possibility of eternal cycles casti of creation and destruction, making the universe's story one of endless renewal rather than finality. The Challenge of Merging Quantum Mechanics and General Relativity One of the most significant challenges in modern physics is the incompatibility between high quantum mechanics and general relativity, the two pillars of contemporary science. While quantum mechanics governs the behavior of matter and energy at the smallest scales, general relativity deals with gravity and the fabric of space-time on a cosmic level. These two theories are both immensely successful within their respective domains, but they don't fit together seamlessly when scientists try to describe situations where both quantum effects and gravitational forces are important, such as near black holes or during the early moments of the universe after the Big Bang. In particular, General relativity predicts the existence of black holes, regions of space where the gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape. But this leads to a paradox. According to quantum mechanics, information can never be destroyed, yet any information that falls into a black hole seems to disappear forever. This conflict is known as the information paradox and resolving it is one of the major open problems in theoretical physics. Physicists have made several attempts to reconcile these two theories, and one of the most famous is the Wheeler-DeWitt equation, which tries to combine aspects of both quantum mechanics and general relativity. The Wheeler-DeWitt equation describes the universe as a wave function, essentially treating it as a quantum object without reference to time. In this framework, Time is not a fundamental property of the universe, but emerges from the interactions of quantum particles. However, this equation remains highly speculative and untested, and it doesn't fully resolve the tension between the two theories. Another candidate for unifying these two fields is string theory, which proposes that the basic building blocks of the universe are not particles, but tiny, vibrating strings of energy. These strings operate in a 10-dimensional space-time, far beyond the three dimensions of space and one of time that we experience. String theory offers a way to potentially unify quantum mechanics and general relativity, but it is still theoretical and lacks experimental evidence. It also faces criticism for being nearly impossible to test with current technology. If physicists can ever develop a theory of everything, a single framework that successfully merges quantum mechanics and general relativity? It would revolutionize our understanding of the universe. Such a theory would answer fundamental questions about the nature of space, time, and matter, and could help explain how the universe could emerge from nothing, or perhaps show that the universe has always existed in some form. One particularly confusing aspect of this quest is the role of the uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics, which adds another layer of complexity. The principle states that certain pairs of properties, like the position and momentum of a particle, cannot both be known with perfect precision at the same time. This inherent uncertainty is woven into the fabric of the quantum universe, making it difficult to pinpoint the exact nature of reality at the smallest scales. As scientists continue to explore these mysteries, the hope is that one day a unified theory will emerge that provides answers to the deepest questions about the origins and fate of the universe, and whether it truly came from nothing, or if it is part of an eternal cycle, as suggested by theories like conformal cyclic cosmology.